1967, uh, I was promoting a deer hunters contest at the Mint Hotel. And a couple guys came to me that were building dune buggies. We bought two of them, two of the dune buggies. And to promote, I hired the two guys that built them to take one of them up to uh, Lake Tahoe, our sister hotel up there, off road. And we assigned a, um, a news bureau photographer to go along with them, which made Life Magazine, incidentally. It took three days for them to make the trip. Three days to go from Vegas to uh, Sahara Tahoe. When, on the highway, you could do it in eight hours. Then I went into Bill Bennett and I said, you know, the guys came back and said that it'd be a fun way to have a race. I said, what do you think, Mr. Bennett? He said, well, work something up. So I did. I worked it up, came back to him, and we would run from Las Vegas to Beatty and back, a big circle. So. We had about 40 entries. I think the entry fee was something like $125 or $150 for entry fee. With that, you got a room and all kinds of goodies, t-shirt, you know, and then entries slowed up. So I called my friend, Mel Larson, <laughs> down in Phoenix. I said, and now he's been racing NASCAR and promoting drag racing in Phoenix at his own drag strip. So I says, how would you like to race in an off-road race, you know? He says, what's an off-road race? <laughs> I says, I can't really describe it except that it's off-road in the desert, in dune buggies. He says, well, I don't have a dune buggy. And I says, I'll get you a dune buggy if you say you'll race in the race. I didn't know what I was getting into, or I probably would have <laughs> said no. You know, but so I was fine. I came up and they got me a dune buggy and and we go out in the desert and these guys are jumping all over the place, up and down and dirt and oh, and I thought, what the heck did I get myself into? But I said, well, I agreed to do it and Parnelli was a good friend of mine and Bill Strop, so I, I just figured it'd be a lot of fun. And as a result, I'm sitting right here and all this land and everything around is because of this guy dragging me up to <laughs> Las Vegas to go get dirty in the desert. The start of the, the first Mint 400 was chaotic. We had a time clock set up at the end of old Fremont Street, which eventually turned into a dirt road. And that's where we started the race. Uh, and we get assigned a card to every car and motorcycle, because motorcycles raced then. Well, pretty soon the cars were leaving before we got the time clocks <laughs> even working. <laughs> and they had to start handwriting it in. Joe O'Rea, he was our Kino manager. He was at the checkpoint in Beatty, at a gas station, Chevron gas station in Beatty. He gets up there and there's already been about 10 cars through the checkpoint. Thank God the gas station guy knew they were coming. Then Joe Orea gets there. Oh, when the race is done, Orea comes back into Vegas, just dirty, filled with dirt and just his shoes were, he threw away his Gucci shoes. How far did you get that first year? I didn't get that rock bottle. <laughs> yeah. Did you get the Beatty? Uh, but we drove the car, I think, to Beatty. Yeah. Because that's where the girls were. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was Ash Meadows. Oh, it was that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't get the Ash Meadows then. But uh, no, it was uh, totally new to me and half of the people there that. Nobody knew. Across the desert, we always just thought it was just solid crust, but it was silt, and it was... The cars, we'd get all plugged up, the carburetors and all, <laughs> and you couldn't see, your eyes were full, your mouth and ears were full of dust, and uh, half of us were looking for Norm to maybe <laughs> kill him. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a funny story too. Okay, the executive wives wanted to, you know, be take part. So we got a helicopter for them, and they they wanted to go up to Ash Meadows because they thought that there was a restaurant there and everything. Now they didn't know that Ash Meadows at that time was a whorehouse. <laughs> so the helicopter lands at Ash Meadows and it's full of silk because race cars have already been through. Dust and everything. And the girls are getting out of the helicopter. Now they all had to more or less go to the bathroom. There was a line of girls lined up on by this walkway. <laughs> they get in line. Guess what line it was? The business end of the Ash Metals line. <laughs> And three of them got picked up. Yeah. <laughs> but now they understood, <laughs> didn't like it, but they understood why we had to do so many free runs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we were free running all the time up to Ash Meadows. And guys in the race, they couldn't make it past that Ash Meadows a lot of time, or because the car's dusty or the spark plug is missing, but they'd almost carry the car to get to Ash Meadows. <laughs> <laughs> After you left Ash Meadows, this big sand dune is called a walking dunes, and it moves depending on winds and everything. You could, that was a shortcut. If you dared to go up over that sand dune, you saved yourself a long trip around the sand dune. And a couple cars did try it, and they ended up on the top, on their roof because they forgot that a sand dune, when you go up, it's slanted, but it concaves when on the other side. And they they went up there like 90 mile an hour and it took off. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I don't think we ever finished. Did you we? never finished a race. Yeah. The National Guard entered a tank in the race. Yeah. These were out at the gun club when we raced out at the gun club. And uh, then the one year motorhome. Yeah, the tank couldn't even finish. The tank couldn't get through. <laughs> <laughs> the silt was too deep. And a motorhome, he didn't even complete a lap. No. <laughs> I mean, we had, you, if you could race, if you wanted to drive it, you could enter the race. Yeah. There was no, <laughs> no restrictions. Yeah. It was the first major race ever off-road in the United States. It was the first race ever to guarantee purse. It's still, I think, the only race that ever guaranteed a purse. In other words, you knew you were going to get $5,000 if you won the race. Well, yeah, the main thing was nobody had any idea this was the first time of this in the silt. And so nobody had any idea what it was going to take to compete and or finish. And uh, so everybody was just guessing on what to do. And half the time they guessed wrong. And yeah. it, uh, uh, it was. It was like a comedy cartoon. Uh. <laughs>